Hello, I'm Cass Westover, the Prop Master and Gizmology Specialist at Chicago Shakespeare Theater. I want to make you a Gizmology Specialist too, by having you make a Rube Goldberg machine. Reuben Rube Goldberg was a cartoonist, engineer, and inventor in the early 1900s. His cartoons, which depicted elaborate machines accomplishing simple tasks, led to the term Rube Goldberg machine. If you've ever played the game Mousetrap, which was created in the 1960s, you've seen one of these machines in action. Here are some other examples of Rube Goldberg machines in action. Every time one element meets another, we call that a transfer of energy. Sometimes the balls or moving objects trigger things to move backwards or to engage some other object onto the next relevant energy transfer. So that's a Rube Goldberg machine. But what is gizmology? Generally speaking, gizmology is the study of making stuff out of other stuff. As my teacher, Tom Fiocchi, would always say, if you use gizmology, you get 90% of the results with 10% of the work. What he meant is that instead of taking the time to make something and all of its moving parts from scratch, you can use things that already exist and stick them together. Not only does this look good and it works, but you have time to, you know, make a TikTok about it. When my team and I make props at Chicago Shakespeare Theater, we use gizmology to turn lamp parts into historical staffs or piece items together to make something like the invention from Beauty and the Beast. The premise behind gizmology can really assist in making a Rube Goldberg machine. What it takes to make these creative choices is to look at objects in new ways for whatever we need them to be. I like to use recyclables when I build things because I already have them and if I use them after their intended purpose then it makes me feel a little bit better about the waste that I've created. You gotta make sure you clean stuff out though, um, not only just for crafting but in your regular life. Because when you think about it, someone has to deal with this after you've recycled it. And it's not going to work if it's super dirty. Let everyone in your family know for a week or so. Just hold on to those recyclables. Cleaned, of course. And then you'll have a big pile of stuff to work with. A lot of times people use marbles in Rube Goldberg machines. But as you saw in the beginning, I used a 16-inch softball, golf ball, and a cat toy. These were the ones I landed on, but I could have used any of these other ones. Also, if you don't have a ball, you can ball up a piece of tin foil, and that will sometimes work too. Okay, get ready, because here are the rules for the challenge. Chicago Shakes wants to see your Rube Goldberg machine in action if possible. Your machine must have at least five energy transfers, and the final act of your machine or objective is to water a flower or plant. You must use one recyclable item that you would find in your bathroom, two recyclable things you might find in a kitchen, and junk from around your house. Now, before you take even one piece of garbage from your sister's trash can or the dusty old what's it in the back of the cupboard, please ask permission first. Super important. Bonus points will be awarded to those who decorate their machine or the areas around their machine with newspaper and magazine clippings of a message of a better world. I use newspaper clippings and that's a great place to start. I got lots of pictures of kids and dogs and cats and people. Maybe you already have some ideas on how to get started. That's awesome. One really important thing to remember though is that engineering is not simple. It's kind of unlikely that you will attach things together and it'll work right away. The way that engineering works is build it, try it, fix it. I'll also say that I couldn't have done it by myself. It can be a really fun family activity. Just stay patient if it's not going very well. Take a break, have a snack, maybe a nap come back and you'll be fresher and you might see something that you didn't notice before. Build it, try it, fix it. Need some help along the way? Ask your folks or an uncle or a sibling, older or younger. They have small hands. 
It takes a lot of courage to ask for help sometimes, but it's way better than banging your head up against a wall and then throwing out your project out of frustration. Okay, a couple of tips on technique. The three tools that you should probably have when you're starting this is a butter knife, a ballpoint pen, and a pair of scissors. The butter knife is surprisingly strong, especially for cardboard. Sometimes cardboard is thick and sometimes it's thin. When it's thin, you can probably use your scissors. Make sure whenever you're cutting that you're always cutting down. And you see how this is going to get wobbly? Maybe I'd want to turn it so that there's more surface on the area for when I'm cutting. Boom! The ballpoint pen is to poke holes in your stuff. For instance, now again, when you're poking something, you want to make sure that you're poking down it, that your fingers are clear. I needed some string, so I went and got my little bin of stringy things. Hot tip. Tape everything down. Because if you don't, things will shift and all that time you spent with precision and aiming will fly away to the land of lost wishes. For this ramp I built, I actually double-sided stick tape or with a loop on the bottom and as I adjusted where it wanted to be, it would stay down until I was super happy and then I taped it down in earnest. When shifts inevitably happen later, it's easier to adjust the things that are not taped down, like the books. In order to make structures, you might think like, oh, I'm going to just stand something up like this and tape it down. It's not always going to work. It's really good if it has this little L. Also, I cut off triangles and glue, hot glued them so that it gave it a lot more structure. Here was a really cool idea. So we originally tried to do this with a plastic cup, but all of the pressure started squishing the cup. So we used glass instead. When I put on the rubber bands, I just put them on willy-nilly, but that created a big lump in the center. So it was suggested that we do it more in like a grid form. It's a great bounce. Classic catapult. Always a good time. And if you aim it just right, you might just succeed. We cannot wait to see what you come up with. All participants can send pictures or video to CST Education Department at chicagoshakes.com. We're not going to share any of your information. We just really want to see what you can create. Let's do it! <laughs>